Okay, well, <clears throat> I decided to make a short video on reading and welding electrodes and understanding them. Just kind of giving you some basic information. Um, <clears throat> I know when I was first starting out, this probably would have helped out a lot. So, basically, we'll start out with 7018, since it's pretty common. So, we'll just start out with the basics. This is your tensile strength right here. This is the positions you can weld with it. Now, the one is all positions. That means flat, horizontal, vertical, and overhead. <clears throat> the eight is your coating chem chemical composition, basically. What the coating's made out of. The eight for 7018 is iron powder. Now sometimes you'll see like a dash one and all that means it's is it's improved impact toughness. That's what that stands for. Then once in a while you'll see like a H4R added to the end of it as well. What this means is it's you know it's the it's, it has to do with hydrogen. So the 4 stands for 4 milliliters of hydrogen per 100 grams. That means not a whole lot basically because this number can range from 4 to 8. Sometimes you'll see like a H6R or an H8R. Just depends on what brand you go with, you know. This the having the 4 is better. Just means a lot less hydrogen, which hydrogen causes your welds to crack. Now, that's not the only cause that causes your welds to crack, but that's pretty common. Um the R stands for moisture resistant coating. So, but now we'll talk about 6010 <clears throat> and 7010. Now, you got to remember electrodes come in many different colors. Bowler makes their stuff in like a brown color, 6010. You know, this is Lincoln right here, so. This is a 6P+, plus, but the 5P+, plus looks exactly the same as the 6P+. Plus. There's nothing different about them. Just what they had at the welding store when I went and bought some. Now, this is 7010. A lot of guys call it Hippie. It's just a 7010P1. And 7010 and 6010, they're both, you know, you both read them the same as, like, the low hydrogen, 7018 electrodes. You know, this is your tensile strength right here. These two numbers. This is your position. One means all position. Now, let's say let's say you had a two there, which you probably wouldn't ever have a two there if it's a cellulose type electrode. But let's just say, for an example, if you had a two in place of that, it would mean you would. It's only for flat and horizontal. That's all it would be for. So, but usually when you see a two, it would be in seventy twenty-four. Now that's just basically like a build-up rod, build-up round stock, and stuff for machining or whatever. <clears throat> now the zero is the coating composition. You know, it's a cellulose type electrode. That's what it stands for. Um. You know, your 6011 um, still a so cellulose type electrode. It's just you know want this. You know you got sodium or you got potassium. You know sodium cellulose, potassium cellulose. That's the difference. So and just so you know, 
Lincoln also makes a 7P plus. You know, a lot of guys call this hippie, like, you know, it's just kind of its nickname, just how a lot of guys call the gray rod 5P plus. It's just 6010. Now, just for some extra information, that wire that you see inside, you know, call it the rod, that's called the core wire. And your binder that holds this stuff together, your coating together, is called, I mean, is called sodium silicate. Now, one other electrode I wanted to talk about, it's not re very popular yet, it just doesn't seem to be over here, is your 7016H4. Now, this is a low hydrogen electrode as well. Looks exactly like 7018. It's really no different. The only difference is your 7016 doesn't have as much iron powder as your 7018 down here does. <clears throat> but it's still, you know, still got low levels of hydrogen. And I guess one thing I should point out over here all your electrodes ending in 5, 6, or 8 are your low hydrogen electrodes. That means you need to keep them in a sealed container or just don't open the uh, container until you're ready to use them. Or keep them in a rod oven. You need to keep them at like 250 degrees or something like that. So the the you know the only difference i can really tell is you know i know a lot of guys probably don't do this but um at my company we do have to test with it but doing low hydrogen open roots with stick electrodes now that's not very common cuz most of the time you'll put it in with a 6010 or 7010 the the root on pipe but the 7016's a little a little bit more designed for those open roots with low hydrogen. It's a little, I think it's a little easier, but it's all personal preference <clears throat> or whatever the code says. If you're, if you, if you can only do it with 7018, you know you need to stick to that. But the last thing I want to talk about is F numbers. Now. You got F. So your F numbers. And most people don't know what these are. <clears throat> and they're like, when will I ever see them? Well, if you're going to school for welding, <clears throat> these will probably show up on your test. Because I know I had a lot of tests on them. So you get pretty good at knowing them. So basically your F1 is your high deposition rods, like your X20 or your X24. Now these, you can change these numbers, you know, that's just the tensile strength, but this is your positions. They're usually flat and horizontal. Now your F2 is your mild penetrating that's like your like your 6013 or your 6012 you know one of those <clears throat> now your F3 is like your 6010 your 7010 it's just deep penetrating or your 6011 so, and then and then your F4 is your, you know, that's your low hydrogen electrodes right over here. That's your white, your white rods. So basically, that's there's only three. These are your low hydrogen electrodes right here, these three. Any numbers ending in 5, 
6 or 8. Like I said earlier, that's your F4 group. Those are your low hydrogen electrodes. This is your deep penetrating. This is your F3 group. Your F2 is your mild penetrating. That's your 6013, 6012. And then your F1 is like your high deposition build up rods for like flat and horizontal. That's why the two is there. It's flat and horizontal. Now I'm going to throw a few other things in there. Try not to confuse you. It's just a little extra information. You'll see an F5. That's your stainless. Like your 308. And so on. But we won't get into that right now. Don't want to confuse you too much. But one other thing I do want to show you is 8045. Now, like I said earlier, the same rules apply from what's down here to here. This is your tensile strength. That means it just has 80,000 pounds of tensile strength. That's the minimum. Now your 4 kind of mixes it up. Because one thing you got to understand in your positions, they only have three numbers. It goes one, two, and four. There's no three anymore. One is all position, two is flat and horizontal, and four is all position, but it's a vertical down. That's the only difference. Is you can go flat, horizontal, vertical, down, and overhead. So, by looking at this, this is what you can weld pipe with. It would be low hydrogen, vertical down electrode. So that means it would run like these, but instead of having all the hydrogen that these rods have, you'd have very minimal. Because it's a low hydrogen electrode due to the 5, <clears throat> and it's a vertical down. So you'd have the speed. When you go uphill with like your 718, which you have to, <clears throat> and your 7016 and your regular 7015 uphill is very slow compared to your downhill cellulose electrodes. The reason why they've got this is it's so you can have the speeds that you have with your 6010 and 6010, 8010, but you can also have the mechanical properties of low hydrogen. That's the difference. But it's very hard to learn to weld with this. You you need to get really, really good at striking your arcs, doing your stops and starts, getting good tie-ins, wash-ins. You gotta practice a lot with like your 7010 and your 7018 and you gotta pad a lot of pipe before I'd go to that. You need to practice a lot. And basically, once you strike an arc and then you stop just throw that rod away and get a brand new rod. It's pretty easy to get pinholes with this with this type of electrode when you start again. So just get a new rod. They're going to come kind of pointed. <clears throat> when you get them, you're going to think the slag's broken off on the ends. That's how they're supposed to be. All of the <clears throat> 8045 I've ever used has always been pointed. But, you know, and that's one that brings up another point. You need to take care of your electrodes, especially your 7018. You need to keep them in a rod oven or in a sealed container, like I said, or just don't open the package until you're ready to use them. But you need to keep them, if they're in the rod oven, keep them at like 250 degrees. Um, do not put your 6010, 7010, just any of your cellulose electrodes in a rod oven. You're kind of an idiot if you do that. These need moisture. They have moisture. They need it to run properly. If you put it in a rod oven, you're going to fail your welding test, guaranteed, and it's going to run like crap. So, hopefully, this helps you out. You know, always post questions and I'll try my best to answer them. But, alright, well, 
That's everything.